Hi, welcome back. We're going to talk about question number five now. Review the voter registration in a small town, and we collected information. So we said, what is your gender, and what party affiliation do you have? Now, this is categorical data, so let's copy this down. We've got This data we collected, and we're supposed to be calculating what proportion of males are registered as Democrats. So we got to tally all this up. Here we go. Okay, so we talked to 2,000 people, right? And asked them two questions. What's your party? What's your gender? Of the males, okay, so of the males, how many were Democrats? Okay, so we talked to a thousand males, and it looks like 300 of those were Democrats. And I didn't use a calculator, so let's just make sure I can tally that up. So I get exactly 30%. Beautiful. Next question. Which of the following graphs can be used to summarize data in a two-way table? Well, this is a two-way table, and this is a two-way table. So how could we visually display this information? Okay, so this is kind of like toys. This should make you think of toys in class. We asked, what was your favorite toy, and are you a girl, and are you a boy? So the type of graph we used that day in class was a segmented bar chart, okay? And so a segmented bar chart is like, you want the uh, height to be 100% of the men and 100% of the women, and you can calculate the percentage of each. Okay, so we had a 1,000 men we talked to, um, and because we're, what if we talked to different amounts of men and women? We could still do this, we're just figuring in percent. But we talked to 1,000, so 300 out of 1,000 was 30%. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, so now I can uh, visually do this side by side, even if there were more women in the survey than men, because this is 60% of the women and this is 30% of the men. Uh, Republican, oh, so that's half of them. So I could do half, one, two, three, four, five. So that's leaving me, uh, yeah, two, two left for other. Okay, so this is Republican. What do we get for the ladies? It's 300 Republican. So it's the same as the Democratic, that the height, but that's our Republican. And what's left, 100. So I guess I made Republican a little bit too small. So there you go. There's Republican and there's other. So this allows us to say, oh, well, more men, men are more likely to say other, men are more likely to say Republican, women are more likely to say Democrat. Um, we could also say women had the same amount Republican as men had Democrat. Those are some summaries we can make from this chart. But again, um, this is a segmented bar chart. Okay. Well, why can't we do a dot plot? Well, the dot plot would have like zero. That was like our homework question. How many hours of homework did you do? And I made a dot plot. I don't have numbers down here. I, I'm not going to make 500. See how that doesn't make sense. I'm making dots on Democrat, Republican, other. Dot plots are for quantitative data. Box plots are for quantitative data. Stem plots are for quantitative. Histograms are for quantitative. This is categorical data. All right, so the others are for quantitative data.
Beautiful. Okay. So let's keep going. Question seven. If you miss seven, let's get to the bottom of it. It says, which is true? We talked, uh, we collected 140 songs. Okay. So it's talking about measure of center and skewness. So if we look at this, it's skewing to the right. So we're automatically going to eliminate these. And so if I know the measure of center, I can figure out the answer. All of them say with several high outliers, and we're seeing that that, that would be true in all cases. So that's not going to determine our answer, okay? So how do you determine center? Well, the best measure of center in skewed data is the median. We better write that down. The best measure of center in skewed data is the median. The best measure of center in symmetrical data is the mean, but when it's symmetrical, the median and the mean are exactly the same number, so the best measure of center is always the median. We just like to say the mean when it's symmetrical. Okay, big deal, gotta know that. Now let's figure out what would the median be, and that's easy to find, that's just the number in the middle. So how do I find the middle of 140? I'm just gonna divide by two. So I have 70 songs that are shorter and 70 songs that are longer, and the median would be right in between those. So I'm technically looking for the 70th song and the 71st song and averaging those two together, but we're probably not gonna get that precise. We also know it's skewed right. So we're just kind of down to A and C. So let's draw on the picture. I have to find the 70th and then the 71st song. Okay, well, this, these are the first 20 really short songs. And then these are the first 50, I don't know, 55, 56, 57 maybe. I'm already to the 70th song. Think about stacking up this 70th song. The 70th song is living in this range of numbers right there. So my 70th song is somewhere between 3 minutes and 3.99999 because it can't go to 4 minutes. So... twenty. And 50 makes 70. Ooh. This is weird. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, if I had to guess, I would guess here. It's definitely not centered about eight, but I would say technically it would have to fit here. Hmm, interesting. So... Yeah, that's weird. Sorry, throw me off. I would say the center would have to fit in here because the 70th song. But let's say they did that wrong and they went slightly here. It's definitely not up here. That's not, a center is not at eight. All right, next question. Number eight. It says a policeman wrote down all of these about 251 cars. So there's 251 data points in there. The max value is 35. So again, in a, in a bin, that's called a bin width, 35 to 36, they put one little measly number there, okay? So that must be our 35th car, 35 miles an hour, okay. Now it says, if this value was actually 29, so oopsies, I made the graph, I totally misread my number, it's not 35, it's 29. So that would make this a little bit higher and this go away. What would happen? Well, here are my choices. So I'm thinking to myself, the spread outedness of the number. The standard deviation measures the spread outedness. So if I eliminate this, the spread outedness of the number, so a typical number 
the typical amount that any number varies from the average, which is probably somewhere here, the average, the typical amount is smaller because this one is much closer to the mean. So I know the standard deviation had to go down. Okay, so I'm eliminating these. Okay, now what would happen to the mean? Well, we know the mean is very volatile. So this is like if I put into the grade book 120% on a test and then I go, oops, you actually got more like a C. It's gonna make your grade go down and it makes the mean go down. The mean is volatile. If I swapped in the word median, then the median would be pretty much the same or same-ish, that's a made up word. So that's our answer. When we eliminate a high value, the mean goes down and the standard deviation goes down. Okay, let's check out question number nine. I'm actually going to do nine on the next video. Okay. 